There it go. Yeah, I'm in Jesus. motion now. There it go. <laughs> Man, look like you in the look like you in the like it's cold out there. The, it, it's it's a little cool out here. It ain't cold. It's a little cool. You know, I got a bald head. <laughs> oh, you got it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking man, about? How, how the weather is out there, though? It's all right, man. It's still all right. Okay, summertime. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. It ain't bad at all. It's hot down here, man. It's hot already. We ain't on um, board. It was like 80 degrees late, uh, last, last, yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was hot yesterday. It's a little, it's a little, got a little breeze going on today, but it's cool. It's perfect. I, I don't know. I, well, I'm pretty sure well, you did call Louisiana before, cause you know, but her, yeah. I don't know if you ever been down here while it was a hundred, a hundred degrees, a hundred degrees down here. Yeah, like yeah I've been, I've been in Shreveport. I've been in Shreveport when it was hot as fuck. <laughs> well, nothing like that. Yeah. Atlanta, on um, Atlanta, on um, water, though. Huh? Nah, it ain't nothing. Well, you know, the South is the South, dog. All right. Right. South is south. How you doing though, bro? Man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm doing good. My family doing good. You no, know, my friends doing good, but this coronavirus, bro, it, it is not doing good. You know what I'm saying? But right. I've been looking right. at, I ain't checked it this morning, but I know as I checked it yesterday, they had five hundred and thirty seven cases of corona and fourteen deaths down here. Most of them like maybe Wait, like in the state, in the state or in the city? The the state got Oh, okay. Um, How about it's probably, it's probably higher than that now. Right. I mean, they really don't know because they everybody ain't getting tested, so you know it's higher than what yeah, they report. Yeah, it's probably it's, pro it's probably more than that because you know they boosted just had the booster boy. Well, they canceled the booster bad, but you said the right. rock and stuff like that. So I mean, right. man, the Snoop Snoop Dogg just came down here did a concert at a club down here. Okay. So I mean, like right. there's probably more people than that. And I feel like I don't know how you feel like you know what I'm saying like. Trump not taking it serious. Like, he just not nah. taking it serious. Nah. See, see, when you ain't never had to be responsible for shit in your whole life, then you get the biggest job with the most power than anybody in the whole world can have. You, you, you don't take shit serious. But see, now, after this shit is over, this is going to be the first time he got to an answer and be responsible for other people. Right. Like, right. like seriously. Like, he ain't never... He never cared about nobody, so right. when you he ain't got to care now, but he still got to be responsible now. And look, he still he don't want he don't want to own up to that. Like I seen a press conference that he had, he was telling a dude like some of you like some people in this room I don't like, and he'll tell him matter of <laughs> fact you and you y'all can leave here now. I said man, this dude here terrible, bro. And I don't like to use the word hate, but he the closest thing that I've come to to saying I really, really, really. <laughs> I almost hate that motherfucker, man. Hey, like, for real. He had no the, regard for nobody. And the crazy part about it, the people that voted for him sitting back like, damn, I really voted for this motherfucker. And look what, look, it, it, it's affecting us like crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, some I of them. Some of them still listening to his ass. I, I, I watch statistics. It's going to be one out of six people catch corona. And think about how many people in the United States. One out of six. That means That's a lot. room of 30 people. You know what I mean? People go, you know what I'm saying? A chance of them catching it is it, it's, it's yep. very, very crazy, man. Right, right. Well, that's why I'm at my fucking house in the backyard. <laughs> that's why we got to do this interview <laughs> on live. Right. Because, you know, of course, I've been down already, but, you know what I'm saying? One won't get nobody sick. Or, you know what I'm saying? You know, because, like I say, it's very good taste. So I'm telling people, you go to the gas station, wear gloves. You go into the store, have to go to the store, wear masks. You know, try not to be, get. Two two spaces in between people. Not saying they got it. Right. It's just taking conscious, right. you know what I'm saying? Because you know you gotta right. come back home to your loved ones, your older older people, you know what I'm saying? You won't get nobody sick. Not saying nobody right. will catch you. Well, let's get a vibe right. of DJ Smurf, DJ Smurf, man. <laughs> man, how what you know about DJ that DJ Smurf, Smurf dog? Ball, bro? How did how did who how did who 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 created the DJ Smurf? Like that was a nickname you got growing up, or you know, yeah. what I'm saying? you gave yourself as you was DJing when you got older. Well, you know, not to show my age too much, but Smurfs was popping when I was young. You know what I mean? So okay, okay, that was like a joke. That was like a joke from some of the big homies, like that I was hanging out with that was DJing before I was, and so it was kind of a joke that 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 they that they cracked on me, and the shit was dope, so I kept it. Long story short, okay, okay, yeah. So, so that's what I'm, DJ Smurf. And that's if it wasn't for the DJ Smurf, that would be nothing else. Like that's how I started as a DJ. Let's be clear. Okay. Okay, what? So, who gave your first opportunity? Like, okay, gave your first opportunity. You feel like you 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 moved on from that opportunity, got to a big opportunity. Who gave your first shot? 
Well, as a as a as a DJ, it was a DJ crew here in Atlanta, actually on the east side, Decatur, called the J Team. And so they was like the the only thing going as far as that go. And so I was 16, 17 at the time. So the the the, the owner of the record store, which was uh so the owner of that shop he gave me a shot as a teenager. He went by the name of Elton J. So from there I met MC Shy D. Okay. And uh that I started DJing for him after DJ Toon. DJ okay. Toon was his DJ before me. Okay. And so that was my introduction into the music business. And how it feel like, you know what I'm saying, meeting these DJ going through different gigs, like and, and well, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it back a little further. Growing I up, can barely hear you, man. I'm out on sound some kind of way. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna get a five. Hold on. All right, go ahead. Okay, I want to ask you on uh, one thing. Like, growing up, was you like who who inspired you growing up with the music? Why well, who was taking stuff back? Like, I, of course, you've been the music all your life. So, like, you know, what I'm saying you growing up in your era was was Marvin Gaye and. You know what I'm saying? And Teddy and all of them. Did, I, did you, you allow them? Gay dog. <laughs> you say Marvin Gaye was my hero? No, I, I, I'm trying to give you a show you show me was younger. <laughs> <laughs> but Marvin, but keep it real, Marvin, I was just that motherfucker, though. <laughs> so, so, I'm from the South, so really my biggest influence was coming from, like, the, the, the Miami Bay scene, uh, two live crew. DJ, DJ Mr. Mix, um, okay. DJ Magic Mike. A lot of people don't know I was actually born in Orlando. So that's where DJ Magic Mike is from. Uh, okay. And he was like one of the biggest DJs in, in, when I was in Orlando. So my influences as a DJ were DJ Mr. Mix, DJ Magic Mike, DJ Man, uh, Shadi's first DJ. Um, uh, 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 so, you know, a lot of the Southern DJs of, of that time were, were my influences. Okay. So you knew you like you was going to be a, um, a DJ? Well, my whole career has just been progressing. I started out as a DJ, but I progressed. So I started out as a DJ. Okay. I started producing for uh, MC Shad D. Okay, MC Shad For him on the road, right? Shad D, man. So when he when he when he he was signed to uh, Luke, he signed to Luke Records like, back in the day. So when he got off of Luke Records, he, he signed to a label called Itchy Bun that was here in Atlanta. And so the album that he did for Itchy Bun, I produced probably most of that album. Okay. So that's how I started producing. And so um, while I was producing, I would do little records on the side. So I got a record deal with Itchy Bun Records. The shit that I was doing on the side, so that's how I started rapping. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. I made four albums. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, I made four albums. So if you if you search DJ Smurf, you go to right. YouTube and search DJ Smurf. I made like four, four albums. That was all of that booty shake Miami bass, Atlanta bass music type right. shit. Right. So at the end of that, I started my label, and, and Yin Yang Twins was like the first act on that label. How, how did that happen? How did you even meet Yin Yang? So how you how you discovered the Yin Yang Twins? So, D Rock had that one. And he, uh, that my dog, uh, D Rock. Uh, yeah, he was signed to each of Bone Records at the time, too. So that's how we linked up. Him and Kane went to high school together. Okay. So, are they, are they, they brothers? Nah, hell no. They ain't playing. Oh, I swear. Just help D Rock right. right. All the time. Nah, nah. D Rock had a record deal as a solo artist, and Kane would help him write. So, I met Kane through D Rock. And so they became the Yin Yang Twins as a feature on my on one of my albums. That was their first appearance as the Yin Yang Twins. They weren't really no group, but that's what they called themselves on my feature. Okay. So when I heard them together, I was like, yo, y'all dope as fuck. Y'all need to keep this shit. Because the thing that I heard on that record was was what y'all hear now. Okay. And so that's that was the birth of the Yin Yang Twins. So when I decided I wanted to start a label, they was the ones, like the, the chemistry that they had. I figured I'd take a shot on that. And Whistle While You Twerk was the first song that we did. And I was young. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not that old. I'm like 28. Whistle While You Twerk okay. came out. I had to be about seven or eight, maybe. Seven, yeah, because that, um, that was in 99 Yeah. When, when Whistle While You Twerk came out. Yeah. Yeah. So you about right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, when I saw I heard that song, that beat, yeah, yeah, in this thing, I was like, man, who was that? Yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah. like, I was like this, I was like this. But then I was like, man, get in front of that TV. I, man, I just wanted to be, you know what I'm saying? It was something different. Because, you know, right. around that time, cash money, you know what I'm saying? Cash money, man, people was still hot. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and that was bumping, you know, the, the juvenile, four degree. But when you heard it was white turk, it was something different, some, you know what I'm saying, more than the gangster. More than the guy right. at the moment, it's time something you can dance to. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Like, so a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know what our sound come from, right? So I was coming out the Miami Bay's the freak type shit. I was coming off of that sound, and right. you're right. Hot Boys was the shit, right? In '99. Right. So I want to say Hot Girls and Back That Ass Up was just you know what I mean? Yeah. Was just starting so. To, to kind of fit up in that, that kind of made me fuse the Miami Bay sound with the with the New Orleans bounce sound. Right. Which created the quote unquote twerk sound. Right. And so that's what the, the Kali Paul yin yang sound was, the twerk sound. Because before then, twerk wasn't a sound. Right. It was just a word. And we took the word and used it strictly for dancing. And right. uh, I, I, I don't. I don't want to say we started that because we didn't create it, but I, I'm pretty sure that before we dropped Whistle While You Twerk, nobody used the word strictly for that. Right. And and, and, and put it to a sound. It's almost like Lil John taking Crunk because he wasn't the first to, to start using Crunk. He just made a genre of music off of it. Right. So it's kind of like what we did with Twerk. And did, did you feel like when you put that Whistle While You Twerk by Juvenile and the high boy so hot, would you like – Skeptical, like, man, this might not do good, or you're like, man, I know it gonna do good. Like, you had no doubt in your mind that it wasn't gonna do good. I mean, I was doubtful number one because what well, we was that that sound was, was popular at that time. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I won't say no limit was everywhere. So the booty shake, the the Miami bass sound was gone. Like nobody was checking for that shit, and it was mostly like gangster shit being played. So that was my concern, but. I want to stay true to me. So I right. don't try to make no 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 gangster shit because that ain't where I come from. It's musically as a producer. So I said shit, I'd rather take a chance on this than right. try to take a chance on some shit I don't know nothing about. So that's why we took a chance on the whistle while you twerk. And it did numbers. <laughs> oh yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> that was the start of the year. But then look, and, and I love the intro, the next song, it said, Yeah, what you gonna do all these years of the whistle while you twerk? And that's when they came out there, um, um, what, what, what the song was? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. I said, wow. Yeah. So they, what happened, the reason why we did that, because, you know, we lost our deal with Universal because we got sued for that uh, Snow White sample. No. The, it was it was the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs where we got the Whistle While You Twerk sample from. It was Whistle While You Work, uh, oh, wow. which come from the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So they didn't know what to do with us beyond that song, so they dropped us. And so we didn't have a deal for a minute. And so we're like, okay, we really don't believe in y'all, but we're going to give y'all another chance. So they made us submit some new music. So I actually submitted I, I, I to Universal, and they didn't get it. So they let us go. And so at that point, everybody was looking at us like it was a month. Like y'all looked up on that shit. And so we put that at the beginning of that song because that's really what people were asking, like, what, what the fuck y'all going to do now? And we dropped that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the rest is history. Wow. Man. So uh, they said, what you found it on California was 99? Yeah, 99. Okay, okay. And then after that, you're like, fuck, you just about to do your own thing, man. So, you know, um, you know, you ain't had to run because, you know, it seemed like every single you dropped, it just they did good every single, but man, when, yeah. when they when y'all hooked up with, with Lil John, yeah, man, when I heard yeah. they, they get low, Lord, yeah, man, they get low, bro. They, I'm gonna tell you yeah. this one the song. I don't care what what you doing, what kind of party you could always play to get low, and it's always go play. It always right. get low, but always go play. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you another secret. A lot of people don't know. I made a song called "To the Walls" on my first album. Okay. With the get low hook. I was the first one to use that hook in a record. And so when they made Get Low, it was almost like a remix of the shit that I had did. It was a, it was real fast though. Like, like some Uncle Luke shit. 
And so a lot of people came and talking about Lil Jon stole that shit and all that, but I had them made the record years right. earlier. So, right. and I, I, I actually copyrighted that shit. Right. And so when they came right. trying to sue, I already had the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm talking about, bro, it, 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 man, it just, man, that song up, bro, like, oh, I know I want to ask you about, um, about, you know, when Yang Yang Twins coming out, because, uh, you know what I'm saying, that, that started the sound, like, they really started the way, like, because when uh, Young Blood Young Blood, Young Blood came out, you know what I'm saying, they all right. sound, you know, the John had the East Side Boy, and then, you know, Atlanta right. just started having this sound, like, th th that sound. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, like every, 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 every like Miami got their sound. Tense got the tribal screw. You know, we got the gangs of fire down in, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, California got the West Coast. New York got their right. style. You know what I'm saying? But so, so to me, that, that's why Atlanta done, done held it so long because you got a bunch of different sub genres of hip hop coming out of Atlanta. You got Tip, you had Luda, you had John, you had Yin Yang, you had Pastor Troy. You had the whole organized noise family. Like, right. none of that shit sounded alike. No. So when you talk about West Coast rap, all that shit sound like West Coast rap. Yeah. When you talk about East Coast rap, all that shit sound like that. Even New Orleans, when you hear bounce now, when 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 um when P and uh uh, uh Cash Money came, there was a it little was variation in the sound with that. Right. But for the most part, you knew what it was when you heard it. I right. think that's what separated Atlanta. Um, to our credit, not not meaning to brag, but I'm just saying that's something I noticed that sometimes when a, when an artist would come out of Atlanta, you didn't really know something. Not musically, you heard by the way they talk, but right. musically it was different. So I think that that's what helped us hold on to, to the spotlight for as long as we have. Now all that shit sounds the same though. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna we gonna go get it today because I dare so we get it today. So my next my next question, um, uh, and like I say, anybody got a question you want me to ask? Please comment. I'm gonna ask question. I, my next question. So you know, you had the Yin Yang Twins. Then, then he, I ain't gonna lie. Then he go this artist you discover. Well, I been listening to. I ain't gonna lie. Me and my friends on Bebo a long time, and I would listen to that. Um, uh, I forgot what song he had out Don't on Bebo. What? Soldier Boy, but don't skip Hurricane because I had Hurricane before Soldier Boy. Hold on, wait, you did? Yeah, I signed. I, I signed Hurricane before I signed. Soulja Boy. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me, <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Can't forget about the Navy. So, I, okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the story. I kind of know the story. Okay, Hurricane. I forgot the man name. The club, the baby used to be DJ, and I forgot the dude name. But you know, uh, uh, Coco Pelly used to be at the club, and he ended up making a song called "Hey Baby," and you know, it started right. doing numbers like. Like how how they how they even happen? Like I, I know you heard the song, but how you even connected with Hurricane? It was through Baby, or you just that shit crazy, man. This D, this DJ here on the radio named King Arthur played that shit in the mix show, and I heard that shit, and I thought it was little Boosie. I you said I heard Boosie. that shit, and I was like, man, Boosie out of here, because I knew he was like a regional rapper. But when I heard that record, I was like, man, Boosie got one. So I was like, he out of here. So I had an interview to do that morning at the radio station here. And a partner of mine told me, that ain't Boosie. That's uh, that's Bebe. He said, you know Bebe. I said, for real? He's like, yeah, I'll treat for it. So he gave me the shit. So he hooked me up with Bebe. And I got on the plane the same day. The same and day. I flew to Shreveport. <laughs> and sure enough, I met Hurricane. You know, I met all these people. And we saw Hurricane that night. That night. And that's how it happened. That's how Man, wait, happened. You heard that song yep. one time. And you signed him that Bruh. night. I thought it was Boosie. I said, Boosie, out of here. I said, Boosie got a smash, but it wasn't Boosie. Because to me, they sounded just alike. I ain't gonna lie, Kyle. I don't know. I don't well, know it don't me. now. I don't it, it, it don't, they, they don't sound the same to me now, but back then, oh, okay. because I wasn't as familiar with the sound, okay. you know, it's like, it's like people say all of us talk the same down here. Right. It's like all y'all talk alike. But now if you get to know a nigga personally, I don't sound like the niggas, man. That's what that was to me. Well, I ain't gonna lie, man. This smash shit though. Hey. But I ain't gonna lie. I've been, I've been filing on um, Hurricane way before you made a song with Lil Willie. You know that song you made? Um, man, what that song? Which the one? Yelp. The yeah. The yeah. Which Yelp one? You made you like fourteen. Nah, I ain't hear that one. You said no. Hurricane first CD you like fourteen. He made a dude one name, a, a song named Yelp with a dude named Lil Willie. 
Man, you gotta go listen to her. It got a video. It's on YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I might not have heard now. <laughs> yeah, man, he 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 got a song. I was listening to him. Now, like, I already knew he went. You know what I'm saying? Went hard, and you know what I'm saying? Just you know, he when when he, he had the movement going in on street boy. So by by right. when you say you signed him, it just, it just right. took out. It took out, man. Yeah, what up, talking man? around with Big Pop and them. Yeah, Big Pop, Lava House, Lava, Lava House. Lava yeah. House, you know what I'm saying? All them boys, they was doing their thing down there, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm Fuck. saying? And, 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 and this hurricane, hurricane, he, he, you know what I'm saying? He, went, he, he was an overnight success. Like, he, he, yeah. he shot the world. I ain't going to lie. When, when I heard him on the radio, I didn't even know he was from down here. I didn't even know. I, I felt so good when I found out he was from down here. I'm like, man, somebody going to reach out on BET? I'm like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it wow. happened fast, wow. too, dog. I felt like, you know what I'm saying, that was my brother. It, it felt so good. Like, you know, he was so young, too. He was, he was young. Right. So right after that, I signed Soldier Boy, and I flew Soldier Boy. A lot of people don't know he's actually in the A Bay Bay video. He so lived. He so It's a lived. quick flash, though. It's a quick. I, it's I a quick the flash. Guy, they I, just pan by the nigga real quick. Hey, um, uh, people, people don't know what you want to miss. Simmons got him. Well, it was actually yeah, Baseville, Mississippi. But yeah. what we did, we flew in the uh, uh uh Memphis, cause you had to you had to drive from from Memphis Airport. To Baseville, it's like an hour or some shit outside of uh, Memphis, so that's where I found him at. But I found him online. But I, I went and you know I got on the plane and went and signed him too. So hey, I did them son, both just just the same. Your son, your son really found him in the video. Your son, because you're like, who is Soldier Boy? Your son really, you didn't know the the, the crazy. Nah, crane that was boy. actually my nephew. That was my nephew. nephew. But when, when I ran into when I, when I actually discovered him before I got down there to sign him, I asked a lot of kids about it. So I was asking kids, really, who is Soulja Boy? Do you know him? Do you know him? And all of them knew him. Right. Because adults weren't up on the internet like that at the time. So I would ask kids, have you ever, and they knew about Soldier and a -Rab. I ain't going to lie. a -Rab yeah. was popular, too. Yeah, so, a -Rab was popular. You know what I'm saying? Like the little girls like a -Rab more than they like Soldier at the time. Man, like I said, I ain't um, tell you no lie. We was friends on Bebo. I used to talk to him on Bebo. And I used to tell him I like his music because that Baby Nate song was out. Man, that, that's how. That's baby what baby I found them on. Huh? <laughs> that was the song. Yeah. <laughs> I man, ain't fuck with that shit, though. Wild. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't like that shit. You ain't like it? I, 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 I ain't really like that one. Man, I, I tell everybody this, bro. I don't care what they... If they don't like Soldier Boy, I don't care what they say. Man, Soldier Boy changed the game of the music. To the Completely. He Completely. He changed the Boy. Man, he yeah. changed it, bro. You think Completely. about it? That, that, without question. Crank that Batman! All the people trying to do the pop songs and uh, even yeah, he, he, he made to prove the franchise boy. All the boy soldier, he paved the way. Yeah, yeah. He he. Um, I think that the the magic of it is, it's kind of like what's going on now. When I told you we just got to get creative with right. what we're doing because this goddamn coronavirus shit. I think that's what happened to him when he had to leave Atlanta and move to it Mississippi. Park, eh? Oh my! Yeah, you know I mean, kind of park. <laughs> Say what now? Somebody on my line is that's Kylie Park. Yeah, that's Kylie Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, 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 so, but, but what, I, what I was saying is, um, yeah, like, um, it's, it's just crazy. Like, it, the, the movement is just different, though. Like, and then yeah. I know that video. I know that video was fun, man. You had Shaq in the video. Man, you had a lot of cameos in that video, man. Yeah, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. It was like, I couldn't believe the love that the, the, the kids had because, again, grown folks weren't up on the internet like that. Right. But they came out to the video shoot like he was already famous. Right. So that blew my mind because I was, I'd been in the music business for a while, but I had never seen nothing like that before. And it was all from the internet. It happened all the time now, but back then that shit was unheard of. The first right. concert we did for the radio station here, they had competition across the street from the other radio station, and they shit was sold out. We put Soldier Boy on they show, on the on the competition show at the last minute, and that bitch packed out one kids. And never seen the, in the in even the program director was like, man, I ain't never seen no shit like this before. Right. Yeah, I was just like, me neither. Hey, another you want to tell another he said record with the ringtone. You know, ringtones popping back. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Then you know I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, know. <laughs> so the ringtones used to sell just as much as the records. 
Right. Yeah. Right. So now with these, with, these, with these phones we got now that do every fucking thing, you don't need no ringtone no more. Somebody asked me to ask you where you from, Kyle Park. I'm from Atlanta. I was actually born in Florida, but I'm I, I've been in Atlanta my whole life. So you're Atlanta College baby, Park. Man. Yeah. I, I seen. I ain't gonna talk no shit. Well, I'm gonna talk shit. What what what, what college you went to? I seen the college you went to. Yeah, yeah. Alabama and them for sure. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey man, ask you all the way down, babe. Ask you all the way okay. down, bro. <laughs> you gotta love the center, bro. <laughs> We'll follow that college shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll leave that alone. You know, we, we'll leave it alone. You know, we just want a natural championship down here. We'll leave that it's alone. It's all good, man. It's we'll all good, man. Alone. I'm going to have to I like the coach. Man, so, uh, okay, after Soldier Boy, okay, Hurricane Soldier Boy, then. B.I.C. 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 Yeah. How'd that happen? Man, B.I.C. was a barber. It worked at, the, at the barber shop when I had him. Worked in the same barbershop um, that I used to go to, and uh, he he would just always run up on me like, "Yo, man!" He was actually a gospel rapper at the time. Really? And so I would never, I would, I ain't gonna lie, I would always kind of brush him off. I ain't discourage him, but I was like, "Yeah, you know." So my brother who worked with me actually gave him a shot, wow. and he signed him. So I was like, "Yeah," but you know, since he was signed to my brother. I said, okay, I'll come in and I'll do a couple of songs for him. So I did get I produced Get Silly. And then uh that got him his 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 deal over at Warner Brothers. Okay. And so I said, okay, I executive produced the album. I didn't want I didn't want to sign him because he was already signed to my brother. So right. while we was doing the album, that's how we stumbled on the wobble. Yeah. And so yeah. uh Yeah, yeah. So we did the wobble and it was so good. And we just made it look like he was down with the whole soldier boy type shit when we put him out just to ride the wave of what we had going. Right. and uh, But that's really not who he was as an artist. So we could have kept him going with that get silly type shit or we could make him into the artist that, that he wanted to be. So the wobble was a totally different kind of record and it flopped. It failed when we put it out. Right. And two, year, two, three years later, that bitch blew up. It blew up. Man, yeah. Every old school club I go to down here, they going to play that wobble. Every club, they going <laughs> to play that wobble. Yeah. Hey, big yeah. girl. All the big girl, they love this song. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. So, the connection I got to that state down there, of course, through Yin Yang, but the two songs between the stand up and get crunk, uh, for New Orleans, uh 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 and, and, and Wobble, those two records right there are probably two of my biggest records as far as in the culture. You know what I mean? Right. As far as in the culture and and, and, and Louisiana. Got to play a big role in that. I can't yeah. front. Yeah, look at my ATP. Yeah. said you love that song. <laughs> hey man, I, I got love for Louisiana, man. I got hey. love for Louisiana. Hey, I bet you know. I bet you you came down here the best fool of your life, huh? Hey, bro. Hey, I love y'all women too. <laughs> oh, you say you love the women? Hey, they got. Hey, they got nice women in Atlanta, though. Nothing wrong with Atlanta. Hey, bro. They can't cook. Though. Get out of here. They can't cook. I ain't never from Louisiana that don't know how to cook yet. I got, I got somebody on my line. She from Atlanta, Jasmine. Let me find her. You can't cook, Jasmine. You from Atlanta. Let me find her. You can't Ask cook. her. <laughs> Ask her. Jasmine, they can you cook, cook. Jasmine? <laughs> I'm talking. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. Oh, I ain't lying. Ain't nothing like that soul. That soul, that, that deep down soul down here. They, they can cook, man. See, see there's a difference between knowing how to cook spaghetti. Hell, anybody can cook spaghetti. But the women in Louisiana know how to cook. Like cool. Sunday dinner, Sunday you know what dinner. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Spaghetti, you if you gonna bring a pot of spaghetti out, you know if you bring some spaghetti out, you lost. I ain't fucking with that. Hey, somebody on my life they get a Memphis. Somebody on my life they get a Memphis Tennessee lady. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know who watching this shit. Baby. Let's move on. <laughs> Are you ever, you ever been to Esther now before? Say what now? You ever been to Essen, New Orleans? Yeah. I went, I, I went one time. Matter of fact, the year that Prince uh, performed, that was the last time I went. Okay. Because I had never seen P Prince perform, and um, I caught his, his last show there. That's the only time I seen him rock. So, how yeah. was it? How your experience was in New Orleans? I love New Orleans, man. So, for, for me, it's two markets in the whole country that 
I could just go and post up because of the culture of the music is just right. so crazy. And that's New Orleans and Washington, D.C. Why do you say Washington, D.C.? With the go-go okay? shit. Go -go. The go-go shit. Go-go. Because -go. Uh, it's, it's live instrumentation. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's in the culture. The live music is, is embedded in the culture. That's why I like the horns and shit. Like, a lot of people don't know I produce Trap Star for Young Jeezy. You did? And so, the, if you hear the horns in there, and even the stand up and get crunk shit, I like live horns. I was in the band when I was in high school. Got kicked out, but I was in there. So, I like live instrumentation. So, when I'm in the market, well, y'all, y'all, y'all are raised with that shit in y'all. Right. That's a part of who y'all are. It's not like right. that everywhere. So, right. New Orleans and DC, I love them two markets. Yeah, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna put y'all some other stuff. We got another kind of music. Um, it's called Zydeco. You know, Jack and Neil Lil? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you know about Zydeco? Yeah, you know Cupid, my homeboy. I fuck with Cupid. Oh yeah, Cupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's my dog, uh, Cuban, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. He, and look, he even he even put like he from Lafayette. He put Lafayette on man with the Cuban shuffle. That's another yeah. another class. Where yeah. no matter what you do, that's one of the songs they put on. Everybody gonna get out on the damn floor and do. Right, right, right. That's my dog. So what about um? What about when um? Uh, I'm trying to think of what what is what's the name of the next artist um. I remember you had a video with um baby. You like man, who the next artist is? Man, I can't think of the dude. Oh, Trilly and Prince Rick. Yeah, from Dallas. They had to walk around the club, fuck everybody. And Mr. Hit that hole. Well, they had Mr. Hit that hole, and then we did the walk around the club, oh, fuck, fuck everybody. everybody. A lot of people yeah. don't know that was that that was signed to me. That was signed to my label. Now what? Now I ain't gonna lie, Mr. Cowboy. Hey, you know that song gonna cause a lot of fights in the club. Every time we hey, in the club. Somebody got in a fight when they played that song. Hey, bro, we didn't know what the fuck that record was going to do. I remember because they did it with two artists, two other artists that my brother had signed. It was their record at first. So they, they loved the record when they heard it. It was like, man, let us get that. Let us get that. So he gave it to them, right? And so they took the shit back to, to Dallas and blew that bitch up. So they was like, man, y'all need to come out here and see it. Y'all need to come out here and see it. So we got on the plane and went out to the club in Dallas, before it even got on the radio. And, man, they played that motherfucking song in the club, bro. And the whole club started marching around in a circle in the club. I had never seen no shit like that before. From that point on, you would think that record was double platinum. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, what, what you got going on now with the music? I can't stand the fact that uh, this uh, coronavirus shit got us fucked up because right. what I'm about to put out this summer, God willing, you know, this shit pass over and everybody make it out on the other end fine. But uh, I'm going to go back to putting out strip club music. Hey, I do. <laughs> you got any orders on the label right now? I got one that I, that I just signed that I'm going to start off with. We just cut a few records, man. The shit is so good, man. Uh, Hold on a second. You say it's your chick? Huh? You say it's a chick? No, it's a dude. It's a dude. Oh, okay. So, it, but but here's, here's the thing. Like, people think that they making twerk music now. Like, all these females making, going back and sampling our shit and doing all this. It ain't right. the same. We made strip club music. Yes. They making twerk music. Yes. Like, it, it became twerk music. But strip club. And so, I'm doing that doing it for 2020, not 1999. So right. when you hear that shit, it's going to go so fucking hard. Make That's what I'm working on now. So everybody want me to ask this famous question. I ain't lying. Everybody, when I talk to an interview too, everybody want me to ask this famous question to you. Are you looking for artists? And somebody, everybody can ask the same question. Well, no, but yes. So okay. right now, I'm so locked in and what and what I'm trying to do, that there's a, a certain type of sound that I'm working on now. Okay. So when I'm really looking for artists in the way that you're asking me, I'm looking for talent that's already kind of doing their own thing. So I don't never want to sign an artist that got their own sound and shit and make them get on my beats. You know what I mean? Right. I've never been that type of a label. But where I'm at right now, I'm actually starting a new label called Advent. Okay. The Collie Park music, that's 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 then. We 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 moving forward doing some new shit now. So 
with this label, I got a specific kind of way that I want to put it out. You know what I mean? So once I get back to rolling, now if I run into some shit that's just special, then of course. But <laughs> right this second, I'm kind of, I just found what I was looking for. Okay. Yeah. And what's, what's the name though? Are you going to put the name of the artist out? Or you gonna... Well, that's... the name that you got now, we're going to have to change it. So it really ain't no name, but you'll be hearing about it real quick. You'll be, no, trust me. You talking about the artist? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're probably going to have to change the name because it's a common name. And, um, it's a diamond in the rough. Like, you got to, it's funny because a lot of these people blowing up on Instagram, TikTok, and all this shit. And by the time you go try to do a deal with them, you can't tell them nothing. Like, they, they think they already know. So I had to stop looking for artists in that space and create from, from, from nothing. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Now, you know, we got one of the hardest, the hottest artists in the world. He from my city. The hottest artist in the world. He from my city. Young boy? Yeah, he from Baton Rouge. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Kevin Gates from Baton Rouge. Yeah. Fred O'Bain yeah. from Baton Rouge. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep all the games with you, man. I'm gonna keep all the games. Everybody in my city messes me because you know I represent for my city, bro. We have most of the talented artists down here better than people in the industry. I promise you, we got the most talented artists in Baton Rouge. I ain't even talking about young boy and all the people that made it. I'm talking about people right. that did make. They got some talent down here, man. A right. lot of talent. And getting the crazy part about it. All of them in a different way. They, they all, none of them sound the same. Everybody right. in a different way. That's what I like about the music. Everybody in a different way. Right. We got a lot of artists down here that's, 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 that's talented. They, they're talented. I'm well, I tell you what we're going to do here. This is what we're going to do. After I get my shit back up and running, we're going to set up a showcase. Okay. Well, I'm going to come down there, and you're going to get out all of them in one room. Okay. Hey, and we're going to run through it. That, Y'all ain't on my line. They got a showcase coming up. Hey, y'all, hey, get y'all shit together. Yeah, yeah, oh God. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. Just give yeah. me a minute. This summer, I'm taking this summer to put this shit on the map. And after that, we're gonna come down there and see what you Man, I'm telling you, you ain't gonna be disappointed, man. You're gonna be like, man, it's something about Louisiana. You thought Hurricane, you can't, can't stay out of Louisiana. I'm telling you, we got talent down here, man. Right. No, I do. I, I here's what I like about Louisiana. Because you got, like, real niggas who like dance shit, who like dance music. Oh, yeah. So, to me, that's like Miami. Like, you had artists like Trick Daddy who will make the hardest shit in the world, but then he'll make some dance shit. Right. That That's what I like about Louisiana and Florida. Look at Boots. See, uh, <laughs> Look at Boots. Uh -huh. Look at Boots. Right. Talk some gang right. shit. They're going to make a love song by the chick. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's just how we do it. Right, because that's that's part of y'all culture. Like that's what I love about it. Man, um, did you uh, did you did, did you ever meet Boozer before? We met one time. Uh, actually, when I had Hurricane at a uh, some shit. Him and Webby Maybe was was together. He probably don't even remember. But uh, I was on some other shit back then, and they was too. So we ain't really connect like that. Okay. Okay. But yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. You one of the pioneers in the game, cause and I watched the interview about you, man. Like with the, the interview you had with DJ, what it was DJ Smile, and you said yeah. something made so, you know, I'm talking about myself now. You don't never, never really roll no Jerry, cause you know what I'm saying, like that never was you. You know what I'm saying? You say you had a wife nah. 15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Right. It ain't about right. what you got. You know what I'm saying? It's about you know what I'm saying, what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Numbers don't lie. Right. Your numbers don't lie. Right. So the boy want to. The you already know. Right. You like I say you discovered some of the, the best artists in the world. Like you appreciate it, man. Soldier boy, you you know what I'm saying? He he done made songs with everybody. He done did everything under the sun. He had a cartoon. So he he done really transformed to like a CEO, like the boss man he is. You know what I'm saying? Right. All the other stuff, you see the negative stuff, you gotta turn the negative to the positive, like where you come right. from. You know what right. I'm saying? So he was hurricane. People think Hurricane don't rap no more. He still, I, still, I talked to him not long ago. He still, you know what I'm saying, doing this thing like he told me. He said he had to take a break because everything was coming so fast and young. Like, he had to take time right. to do what he wanted to do. Cause he was just, you know what I'm saying, it was just, just coming out too fast. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sometimes we take a long time. So, you know what I'm saying, to come back. But, you know, to me, I still like Hurricane. Right. No, uh, Hurricane, I had not stopped working with him as early as I did because, you know, some business shit uh, got in the way. 
maintain our, 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 our friendship. But business-wise, I couldn't keep my hands on him like I, I wish I could have. You know what I mean? That was a dis- So when I had Hurricane, some shit went left. So I put all my attention on the Soldier Boy. But from a talent perspective, Hurricane would have. If I could have kept my hands on Hurricane, he would have been one of the most God, prolific God. artists to ever. I, I'm, I'm serious. I would have had him because I couldn't believe how talented he was as an MC. Yeah. It, like it, he was a real MC. That yes. that part of him, I didn't get a chance to develop. You know what I mean? So I think it got lost in the shuffle when we when we stopped working. But if I could have kept my hands on, it would have been incredible. Man, I would I would have loved to see you did a on combination that was with Hurricane and all. Um, and on um, and Soldier Boy, man, I think that would have did good, bro. Yeah, I don't know if you remember we did the source cover. Uh, it was yeah, me, him, and Soldier Boy. Yeah, you, that, that's that's the uh, picture I used for the promo for the interview. Uh, okay. okay, I got yeah. it. I got yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> man. It, hey, yeah. It, hey, man. And then you got to think about it. He, um, a Hurricane coming the game, eighteen years old. They got bets in the game. You know, they got you know Jay Z, all these people. But it just man, everybody was just looking like, damn. This kid was free ball away. He go this hard, man. Hurricane really can spit some stuff to you, and you be like, yeah. "Damn, like he really yeah. talented." Incredible, incredible. Still is. Still is. Whatever, happened, whatever happened to boxing? Okay, so boxing was signed to uh, my man Brian Leach. That's why I took Hurricane too. So okay. Hurricane wasn't signed to College Park. He was signed to uh 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 uh, uh Polo Grounds. So when I, okay. him, I signed him, but I signed him over the polo guys, and I just executive produced this project because okay. I was having problems with my deal over at Interscope. So I didn't want to take him over there because his song was already too hot. I didn't have time to fuck around over there, so I gave him to my homeboy. Foxy was signed over at Polo Ground, so he wasn't my artist. <laughs> you see yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't know what so, uh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I always thought he was signed to Polly Park, though. Nah, he was signed to Polo Ground, my homeboy Brian Leach. Brian Leach actually signed Pitbull and ASAP Rocky, and he had your guy, he had all them niggas. He's actually, you know, a dope label. He still got the label? Oh, yeah, yeah, he got ASAP. ASAP Ferg, ASAP Rocky. Uh, I don't know if Pitbull's still over there or not, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. that's who got, so that's who got ASAP Rocky and all them right now? Yeah, Polo Grounds. Brian Leach. Wow. Are uh, he from Atlanta too? Hell nah, he a New York boy. Oh, he a New York boy, huh? Yeah. So I uh, like like I say, man. Another thing I like about you, bro, DJ Smurf. I was delivering, man. I be seeing on your live DJ, man. I be saying, like, look at him. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's where it started, bro. I, I, you can never forget where you come from, man. No, because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Right. right that's like Manny Fresh. I be so happy. Manny Fresh now, because I had no idea that he was a real DJ before he started all that shit. Hey, you must watch that on the Netflix series, huh? I miss the Netflix series, but I follow him on um, IG, and I don't ran into him out here, you know what I mean, when he DJing. So when I see him DJing, all the production makes more sense to me now, because he came right. from DJing. Yeah, his daddy was a DJ. His daddy oh, was a see, I ain't know that neither. That's all right. Yeah, man, ain't nothing wrong. I, I, was, I, I ain't the crazy boy, but I used to DJ. When I was 16, I used to DJ. My name was DJ Duke, boy. Everybody know me on here, yeah. I used to be Why DJ. you stop? Yeah, I, I, I love it, man. I love music. Like, I come from a music background. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just music, okay. I always been, music always been in, in, in my house. Everywhere I go, music always been around. Like, music my happy place. But people don't know that okay. I live and die for music, man. Like, because, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it just, man, and the crazy part about it, us being black, of African American, bro, it's like music. Even though they had civil rights going on in the six and the seventy, they they had a lot of people speak about music and brought a lot of people together. Look at for example, right. James Brown, right? He brought people together, man. They ain't right. gonna be white or black. He brought people together, right. man. It's like you know what I'm saying. Just our music roots so deep, bro. It's so so deep, and you know what and I'm that's saying? what I, I don't feel realize like it. State, I still feel that when I come to y'all state, it ain't the same. It ain't the same as when you go to other places. I you feel the it's it's a part of the culture. And like I say, I only feel that in two places that I go and that's uh Louisiana and uh D C. Ain't nothing like it. Like you go you ever, you ever seen a second line in New Orleans before? Yeah, I have. Yep. It, it's nothing like it. It's nothing. 
is nothing like it. You know what I'm saying? You'll never see it. It, 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 like in the world, like you said, for Mardi Gras, you never see nothing like that. Like we got yeah, you, don't, you, don't you don't know the funniest shit in the world, dog. What? Y'all got some of the most violent niggas in the world. On the one hand, but on the other hand, y'all the best niggas ever. Like, yeah, you know I mean, the salt of earth. Like, I love you niggas, man. I, like, we, for I, real. We love you too, Kyle. I ain't gonna lie. We love you too, man. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, <laughs> that's you that's both. Know, man. You I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, fuck around and get caught slipping. Hey, <laughs> man, this is how blood is down there. Buy you blood. You know what I'm saying? But, right. like, like for example, I'm about to tell you the crazy part. I'm about to tell you the crazy part. My ain't from D.C. Man, okay. I went up to my ain't house like it was 2006, man. Um, um, the, the year um, um, James Brown died. And uh, I okay. went to the YMCA. And I was talking to my cousin friends. And I was telling from Louisiana. The way they put it on TV, all you see, they thinking I had alligators in my backyard and I was, <laughs> I'm this one person. I said, nah, right. man, ain't nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the way TV make it look like. TV right. make Africa look like a certain way, but Africa is a right. beautiful, one of the beautiful fucking country in the world. You know what I'm saying? Just right. TV make it look like, man, it's, man, it's beautiful. Right. Here, man. It's beautiful. Right, no doubt. No doubt. Especially it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so look, man, everybody that can be on our show, we asked him this question here. We asked him, what make you dominant? What thing you make, what make you dominant, Kyle Paul? Because you know the what name makes of me what? Show, dominant role of TV. Dominant? Yeah, what make you dominant? <sighs> In what way? As a person? As a music? Like, like dominant means anything. Like, what? like that's a big question. Because like I say, the name of the show, dominant role of TV. So we ask everybody what makes them dominant. You no, know, dominant means like, what makes you different? What makes you stick out? You know what I'm saying? What? What makes you Mr. College Park? I'm going to stick to the music. I'm going to just stick to it because that's a, that's a big question right there. That's a huge question. So I'm going to stick to the music. What, what makes me dominant with, with the music is, is just that. I do it for the music. I don't do it for the money. Of course, we, we got to eat. We got to live. Right. But I came into this for the music. Wasn't no money in it when I started doing it. So right. I didn't expect money back from what I was putting out. So... I just always kept that. And when money became an issue for me, that's what made it not genuine. That's what made it not fun. You know what I mean? So what makes me, what made me dominant, when you do shit for passion, you're going to always get more out of it. Right. So I have a passion for this shit. Me a lot too. of people, their passion, it comes from wrong, bad places. My passion is strictly music. All right. So the rest of this shit is extra. You know what I mean? The fact that we get fat checks or we can buy houses or buy cars or buy watches. That's all extra shit. It's like getting free money. When I first started making real money off this shit. I couldn't believe a nigga was paying me to do this shit. Right. Cause you so like the first big money. check I got, I looked at almost passed out. Like, nigga, <laughs> they, pay, they pay for this shit? <laughs> you know? So when you're doing this shit right, it's the funnest thing in the world you're going to ever do. Like to get paid to do music, to get paid doing anything, you love to do. I mean, I'm I'm just blessed, bro, and I never right. lose sight of that. And when I start, it's time to do something else. Hey, want me to tell you the crazy part about it? Like you say, you pay. Like I'm passionate about what I do. Like I host, you know what I'm saying? Like you say, name my team, name the company, Diamond Road. See, I host. I know I didn't interview a lot of celebrities. Like we didn't interview a lot of celebrities. We go on a Diamond Road page, you can see it. But I'm so mm -hmm. passionate about it. Like you know what I'm saying? To the point, like like you said. You know, some money not an option. It's just it's, it's, you passionate about it, and you can tell in your music. You, you can tell by the music how passionate the person is. You know, in the, right. anybody can write a song and put it out, but when a person put a song out and it be a hit, it be one of them hits right. for the rest of your life. That's how right. you know it's passion. Right. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you uh, a, a producer that, that, that for me, I can hear it in mostly everything that they do, and that's for real. I can hear in, in, in for real. Um, yeah. Whatever, whatever his background and wherever he come from, it yeah. comes through in, in in his music, man. So, yes, like you just said, you can tell it, you can hear it. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna say for real, Timber, Timber, and yeah, Tim. Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre too. Yeah, yeah Dr. Dre. Dre, you can't even get Dre. Yeah. yeah, it ain't a fact. Right. It ain't a fact. Dr. Dre gonna make you a beat. They gonna be a hit. He passionate about you know one thing. He make a he make a beat. Nine down ten gonna be a hit because it's a Dre beat. Right. Right, and, and he gonna sit in there and get the song right. Right. 
Right. That's 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 another part of production that a lot of people, even I got away from it because I lost the passion for it. For it. I ain't putting no music out like that in a minute. You know, it takes a lot to go in and want to sit down in a room with an artist and make the best possible product that you can. You got to, that take a lot out of your spirit. When you when you when you when you take it from your spirit and putting it into to music, man, that that's a process, man. And you can't just do that with anybody. I don't want to do that. With, I don't want to work with somebody I don't even like. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Just for the just for the sake of getting a budget or getting a check. I don't. I'm past that. Yeah, man, it's passionate. You know what I'm saying? Like some people just do it for the money. Like you know, you might go to record a song with somebody, and you know what I'm saying? You're like, can't you do what to do? But like you say, if you ain't passionate about it, you know, a lot of artists that. It's, for example, they got they got people in the industry. You, you they might not drop it every every two years because they're gonna take a whole year, a, right. a year and a half to make sure everything on the album is right and make sure right. to, to they point into where you know what I'm saying when they put their music out. You know what I'm saying? You'll be like, wow, they finally put their music out. But you know what I'm saying? Then they got people signed to the label. They rush from a hurry to put music out and this and that. They don't really sound all that good. They may have a couple hits out there, but it don't do good on the chart. But people that's passionate about their music. No matter what, how, how, how they do it, how, how it comes, you will hear the passion into their music. And it's going to last. And it's going to last, man. And you know what yep. I'm saying? A lot, a lot, I, I feel like a lot of older rappers feel like all this new age came out. We're going to talk about we're getting to the, all the new age come out. And you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, there, it's not a place, no, but there are two fans always going to be a fan. You know what I'm saying? I always go want to hear. Because people, I ain't going to lie. Some of the music come out now. And I ain't talking about Atlanta picking on them, but I'm gonna throw a shout out. I don't, I don't, I don't listen to it because I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm these saying old, they, they, they doing their thing, but half the stuff they talk about, I don't understand. Like, I think right. it's bubblegum rap for me. Right. It, it ain't. There's like when you ain't putting when you ain't putting yourself. <laughs> Hip hop come from a place of 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 of, of pain, struggle, experience, and if only thing you don't experience is pulling up, popping. Spending money. That's I, you don't need to make a, make, make no song or a whole album telling me about that. that you know what I mean? <laughs> you you don't need to do that. So we we don't walk away from a project now feeling no closer to an artist than before you listen to it. Back in the day, you used to take a piece of that artist away with you after you listen to an album. You don't right. do that no more. That don't exist no more. And it, and it's crazy because like you know what I'm saying. Not saying all the artists, you know. And so I feel like some artists that's been out, they got to change. They style not to keep up with the, the new artists, which some of them don't have to because they just stick to the same artists they can always have. And you know what I'm saying? They they, they you know, like T.I. I like T.I. T.I. is always going to be T.I. He ain't never had to switch his style up. This yeah, day. yeah, I be. T.I. going to be T.I. If you don't like him or not, he always going to have fun. Right. So, you right. know what I'm saying? It's just, it just a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, converting to this new style, which I don't like. So like I say, hip hop right. is there because like it's, it's the, the the new music coming out now. It's just man, it's just man, it's crazy. Like it's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, this it's like this. I feel like this is what we got to set up for. So like I say, back to what I was saying, the artists down here, bad words, man. It's, it's different. Like if you had a feel like we said we're gonna put that show together, you will understand where I'm coming from. You be like, well, damn, this what they yeah. talking about is different because people down here passionate about their music. Like people down here are so passionate about their music, man. It's crazy. Like you'll hear when they, when they when 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 they, when they, when they, when they spit a year song, you be like, well, damn, they from Baton Rouge, right? You know what I'm saying? Just people down here passionate about the music. We don't we don't like having to sit in the industry. Like I said, I listen to number Baton Rouge rappers, you know. Right, right. With well, all we don't we don't put it together, and and, and I'm, I'm looking for see a lot of people slept on what we did because it was all party feel good music. But if you look at the the actual artists that we put on. They were they were real artists. They were stars in their own right. right. Like you might not have seen what we were doing at the time, but there was always artistry involved. Right. And it wasn't just no look at Yin Yang now. A whole catalog of shit. Uh started out being looked at as, as a one hit wonder. Soldier Boy. People thought he was just a dance. Right. You know, twenty years later, you you see what's going on. Right. So I mean it's even even no no matter what kind of music that you do, you have to have artistry in it. I think that's what gets lost. Even if you do a party music, because that's where I come from, you still have to be an artist. You know what I mean? Like I don't want somebody right. just rapping so they can go buy a chain and flex. 
Like that ain't what that ain't what I'm trying to do. I want a real artist that I can build a career with. Right. And one thing about it, like a lot of artists don't know. They gotta know their paperwork. They gotta know the business. They have to know the business. That's another thing. You're gonna be a high owner. Right. You're gonna sign a contract, you'll get raped. You'll never know. You think you getting all this money, but it really they getting all this money. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know the business. I, I, what, but I, I tell I tell here's here's what the dangerous part is of this generation. The game, for the most part, everybody up on, there's more knowledge in general out there now than it was when I was first started. Right. But as a new artist, if you don't have nothing to bargain with, because I don't walk away from several artists in the last couple of months that because they got a, a, a couple of hundred thousand followers on IG, they think that that, that's, that creates bargaining power. Well, right. not for somebody who does music. That might do something for somebody who, who, who signs uh, uh, Instagram rappers. But if I sign you, I'm trying to build a career with you. So if all you got is some Instagram followers and you have created a world for yourself on, on, on the phone, for me, that don't translate. Right. Yeah, you know I mean? Now, if you got millions and millions of followers, that's different. But nowadays, your generation, the generation up under you, think that they can, you know, Go make a couple of videos, get a couple hundred thousand followers, and that's it. You can't that's come it. to the table with me demanding shit. <laughs> right. Just because you got a couple hundred thousand followers, it just don't work like that. So right. you're going to take a hit on your first deal. The, the key is to, 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 to believe in yourself enough to sign the first deal. Don't, get, don't sign no stupid shit. I'm saying. You're going to sign a new artist deal. If you pop within that first situation, then you go back, just like the Megan Thee Stallion shit, then you go back and renegotiate. Right. That's when you That's have crazy. bargaining power. You That's got crazy. Keep on Instagram crying and stuff. Yeah, that was crazy though, bro. Yeah. But you got to, but she can do that now because she puts some real points up. Now, if she ain't put no points up, right or wrong, the points are on the board now. We right. don't know who right and who wrong, but the points are on the board. So right. You got to talk about it now. You can't do that shit if you ain't got no points on the board. Right. And that's crazy. So that's my lesson to, to, for the new artists now. Just because you got, 50,000 followers on Instagram don't mean you can go sit at the table and, and make demands, because if it's me, I'm going to keep it, keep it moving. Man, and, and I'm glad you said something about the followers. Check this out, man. I ain't got I'm just getting a thousand followers. And I did more, did more, did more than having people, you know what I'm saying, that's doing what I'm doing, and you know what I'm saying, and met the people out of bed. It ain't, like I say, it ain't about the followers. It's who follow you. You know what I'm right. saying? It, it, ain't, it ain't about the followers. You, you have a 50, 100,000 followers or you like a post on the twenty thousand or ten thousand like your post, but you got five hundred thousand followers. It's about who following you, who really who really support right. you. You know what I'm saying? People worry about these followers. I don't worry about none of that, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I do what, right. what I do. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm in my own lane. I'm not competing against nobody. I'm not worried about nobody. It's only one big mouth on the side, and that's me. I represent who I am, and I'm true to who I am. You know what I'm saying? My right. family, my diamond are on the TV family. That's who we are. We, any, any event we ever did, you know what I'm saying? We did the Booster Band three years in a row. Anything we ever did, you know what I'm saying? They, they'll call us back because they know one thing. We loyal to We don't go there starting no stuff, and it's all love. We, we show you love when you come to us. We show you all love. Right. Everybody we interview showed us love. You know what I'm saying? They want to come back. So that's how I am. Right. That's how we, we build our family on love and loyalty and respect. That's it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Without without them three factors, you, you can't you can't be you can be successful. And That's another right. thing, you gotta believe in yourself. I don't care what nobody say. You know, you go to hundred people, and I'm pretty sure they had artists you probably made the people ain't believe in, and you done put out, and you're like, now nah, now nah, now nah, they popping, and now everybody believe it. You have to believe in yourself. Stop worrying about yeah. what people tell you or people. You know what I'm saying? Cause people gonna gonna tell you crazy stuff anyway. Go try to put you down when you when you up, and that's just people. You gotta believe in yourself. 